Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Marketing Mastery webinar. Today's topic is going to be a good one, a revolutionary solution to the installation crisis. We are joined today by Scott Humphrey, the CEO of the World Floor Covering Association, who is also heading up a company called Magnetic Building Solutions. And of course, FC News columnist and founder of Flooring Success Systems, Mr. Jim Augustus Armstrong. Welcome hey, you. thank you, Ken. And for those of you who weren't on our debut uh, live video conference webinar in the last month, we're, we're changing the format a little bit and uh, we're live without a net we can't hide behind our powerpoint so um, really happy to be here this is something we promoted like crazy and it was the talk of uh surfaces um what we're going to be covering today so if you weren't able to attend surfaces or if um you know you you need a recap this is just um this is you're in the right spot and just been really excited scott uh, uh and i have been talking about this since probably last summer. Mm -hmm. I haven't really been able to say anything uh, until the last few weeks. And so this has been a long time coming and very excited about it. Before I bring Scott on, uh, Ken, uh, tell us what's happening in the wide, wide world of flooring. Well, you know, Jim, uh, we're still kind of in surfaces or post-surfaces mode. So, um, you know, and I think one of the things that are interesting about surfaces was a sort of lot of great technology that was displayed at the show. And, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about today, um, this new magne magnetic technology, which is the foundation for all types of floors and, and wall applications, it won a Best of Surfaces Award for technology at the show. So that's pretty high praise. Uh, all the retailers who saw it, particularly, you know, NFA dealers loved it. You know, they talked about it being uh, everything from intriguing to a game changer. So, Jim, at a time when the installation crisis is impacting virtually every specialty flooring dealer, along comes a product that can go a very long way to curing what ails this industry. Jim, back to you. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. And when I first uh, talked with Scott about it last summer, I was going, oh, my gosh, I can't talk about it. <laughs> they had some, you know, there, there were things they had to get put in place before they rolled it out, but here we are. So Scott uh, Humphrey is the CEO of the World Floor Covering Association, um, and it's just my pleasure and, and honor to have you on today to share this uh, new technology. So thanks for being here. Thank you very much. I'm excited about it, excited about sharing with those who may not have heard and maybe filling in some gaps for those who have heard a little bit about it. Fantastic. So first of all, let's jump right in and talk about uh, why the WFCA got involved uh, with MagnaBuild. Well, maybe a little bit of history will help, Jim. So uh, two and a half years ago, we acquired CFI, the, the uh, essential properties of Certified Foreign Installers International. And we did that really to reiterate the fact that we are focused on solving the installation crisis. We do not want to be one of those associations who's really good at identifying things, but doesn't necessarily seek to solve them. And thankfully, this industry, we're blessed with a lot of people that are committed to this issue. But CFI gave us the ability to have credibility with installers and also with retailers as a certifying body. While I was at the first convention, I met a gentleman who told me he had created something that was going to change the industry. And as you may have heard me say, I thought, why does every wacko find me? I tried to brush him off and get him away. And he said, well, it really helps with installation. So now you've got my attention. He said, well, I can't really tell you about it. He said, we've got a manufacturer about to start manufacturing. And he said, but after they get started, he said, I'll have you sign an NDA and we'll move forward. Long story short, uh, he ended up not going with that manufacturer and felt like we could help him find the right manufacturer. And I said, well, why, why would we do that? And he, he said, we're a nonprofit. And he said, well, we'll, we'll give you a royalty on every square foot or every square yard that's sold and you can do more good through your association. I said, well, now that's of interest to me. So I, I flew back. I was in LA when he called me, I flew back, I saw the product. And when I saw the product, I immediately realized this is a product that needs somebody with a heart for the flooring industry running it. And so it was very important to me that we were not only somebody getting a royalty that we actually own part of this. And the reasons for that will become pretty obvious as we go through this, but 
the first thing I noted is it certainly helps solve the inflation crisis. It does an amazing job in simplifying installation, uh, so much so that if it got in the wrong hands, we felt like it could really hurt professional flooring dealers. And uh, so we we signed on for a lot of reasons. It, it helps with installation. It speeds the installation process. It extends the life of the installer. So when we signed on with CFI, one of the first things we did is we built a school just outside of Dallas, Texas, in Pointe, Texas. And people told us, if you'll build a school, we'll come, and we'll send people there. But that didn't happen because the reality is the crisis is so bad that if you have a body, you don't want to give them up for five weeks to be trained. You need somebody out there. So we trained a couple of handfuls of people in the first year, and that was it. And we realized that's not going to solve the crisis. We've got to look for a technology that extends the life of the existing installer, allows them to do more, potentially make more money, but with no wear and tear on their body. And when I saw this, I immediately realized it did that. Being an association of retailers primarily with manufacturers, distributors, installers, carpet inspectors, everybody on board, but really focused around the independent flooring retailer, the professional flooring dealer, we began to see other ways this could help. Uh, for instance, in recent years, the buying cycle has extended dramatically because people are buying more hard surface product. And when you buy hard surface product, you don't replace it as often. Well, part of the reason people don't replace product is not simply the cost of it, it's the ease of it. So you've heard me say before, Jim, in our private conversations, I've got 13-year-old carpet in my bedroom. I could get carpet at a good price. I might even get carpet donated to me. That's not the reason I haven't replaced it. I've not replaced it because I don't have two days in my life to set aside to replace that carpet in my bedroom. But if I could do that in two hours, I'd be much more prone to do it. And that is the solution. And so this allows you to expedite the process. It allows you to change products in and out. It's also very appealing to millennials because it uses magnetism. And that's one of the things they find really cool. And that's a, that's a buying block that we've seen that is not utilizing professional flooring dealers right now. And so we, we believe that if we can get a connection between the millennial, the largest buying block in the nation right now, and the professional flooring dealer, that the we have good enough dealers that they can keep that relationship long-term. And so all of those were things. And then finally, the last thing I kind of mentioned was what Mark Cuban calls FOMO, fear of missing out. Sometimes you buy for what it will do for you. Other times you buy for what it would do to you if you didn't. And we saw this as a product that we got in the wrong hands. It could be utilized in a way that was not good for the industry at all and certainly not good for the professional form dealer. Yeah, that, when you and I were first talking about this, uh, that's what my thought went to immediately was, um, you know, in the wrong hands, this could be a detrimental to flooring retailers. So very happy that WFCA took the lead on this. And, you know, it, and we'll talk later about how floor dealers uh, are protected. We'll get into that. Um, but yeah, this, this, is, this is just so different and yet uh, so simple as you're gonna see. Um, so I've got a couple of videos here, Scott. Um, let me go ahead and cue that up and we're going to look at video one. Now before we jump in, why don't you just go ahead and set that, uh, set that up for us. What are we gonna see here? So you're gonna see a video first. It's a video of the process, the platform being used on the floor. And then we'll follow it with a really short video that shows the platform being used on the wall. It's important the video component, because when people see it, they get it. We launched this in China about four months ago, and we had it live streamed. And it was being live streamed by, by WeChat, which is their version of Facebook. We had about 14,000 people following us initially. We put the video on and jumped to 315,000 almost immediately. So people wow. get this when they see it and begin to ask questions about where we get it. So we wanted to professionally produce some videos. Luckily, Robert Barton. Uh, our, our, the head of CFI is very good on camera and has been involved with us through the whole process. So he gets MBS as well as anybody. So that's who you're going to see uh, kind of heading up this video. Okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Robert Varden with the International Certified Floor Covering Installers Association, CFI. You know, I've been installing floors for over 40 years, and believe me, I've seen more installation methods, products, 
even fads come and go in this industry that I really care to remember. But once in a while, something would come along that might have made our job a little bit easier, might have helped us to get the job done a little quicker, maybe even a little bit better. But until now, I've never encountered anything that I could say was truly revolutionary. Today I'll be talking to you about the Magnetic Building Solutions platform for installing walls and floors, MBS for short. The MBS system uses a magnetic base layer that simply rolls out onto the floor. It cuts very easily with a knife and really requires very few tools. Once the base layer is down, it's down for good. You should never have to replace the base layer. That has amazing benefits for future installs in the areas of time and money. Then you simply install just about any product you want on top of it. Be it carpet tile, LVT, LVP, WPC, wood, laminate, even tile and stone. Not only can the base layer be used as a crack isolation membrane, it can also be used as a vapor barrier up to 99.9% .9 using the proprietary MBS tape on the seams. So let's get started. Let me show you just how quick and easy this stuff is to install. As with any product being installed, careful attention must always be given to the floor preparation. Floors must be flat, smooth, and free of debris. When planning your layout for, say, a plank type product, wood, etc., it's best to run your MBS base layer in the opposite direction at a 90 degree angle of the final floor. While not critical, this does help in decreasing the chances of a flooring seam falling directly over a base layer seam. You will also want to balance your layout of the base layer so that you do not have less than a one foot strip along any wall. As you roll out the base layer, tightly abut each seam as you go. If for some reason you have edges that are irregular, you can very easily overlap the edges and double cut the material using a straight edge if needed. Again, the MBS material cuts very easily with a carpet or utility knife. When trimming the product in, leave about a quarter inch gap at the walls unless you are sliding it under the baseboards. While the MBS base layer is designed to be loose laid on the floor, you may run into an application such as ramps or steps for instance that you might want to actually glue the base layer to the floor. Now that we have our base layer down, we're going to install an LVP with the MBS receptive material already pre-applied from the manufacturer. And whether it be an LVP, a WPC, or any plank type material, these procedures would pretty much be the same. So let's take a look at how the ease of installation makes this platform so unique. As with any installation of LVP, you will always balance the room and determine your starting point. Always follow manufacturer's instructions for board spacing and minimum length when determining this point. With the MBS platform, there is no need for a locking system. This frees us up to start almost anywhere we would like. It also enables us to begin installing in multiple directions if we have the manpower. This then greatly increases production and efficiencies versus having to work only in one direction as with most locking systems. Just when you start thinking about how great this system is for the floors, wait until you see how easy it makes installing products on walls. Perhaps now you can begin to see why we consider this platform so revolutionary. With the array of products that manufacturers have the ability to produce in today's marketplace, just use your imagination. With the Magnetic Building Solutions platform, the possibilities are endless. All right. So let's take a look at now the other video. And this one, uh, Scott, is going to be on wall application for walls, correct? That's correct. And a lot of similarities in the way that you cut the product to install. The one difference is we've developed a two by two peel and stick so that you can make any wall magnetic. And you just simply take the peel and stick and apply it. And you'll see Robert, he does a wonderful job of this. And this is a little bit shorter, but it shows you how easy the process is. Okay, here we go. Hi, Robert Varden with CFI. So if you thought the MBS system made it easy to install product on the floor, 
Wait until you see how easy it makes it installing product on the walls. The MBS base layer comes in two by two panels for walls with a peel and stick adhesive already applied. This makes retrofitting a wall with this system very quick and easy. First, as with any installation, be sure to prep the walls as you would any other surface. Although I have put product on curved walls with ease, in most cases, you want to make sure that the surface is flat and smooth. You want to ensure that the product you are going to install will have good surface contact with the magnetic base layer. Once the walls have been prepped and cleaned, you will want to balance the material and determine your starting point. We recommend that you balance the layout as not to have any strip of base layer less than six inches. When attaching the tiles to the wall, remove only about six to eight inches of the peel-off paper from one corner of the back of the tile. This will allow you to position the tile in place without it adhering to the wall prematurely. Once the tile is in place, you then work your way across the tile, removing the paper and firmly pressing the material onto the wall. For the trim end, we recommend you cutting the material to size first and then attaching it to the wall in the same manner as you have the other tiles. Perhaps now you can begin to see why we consider this platform so revolutionary. With the array of products manufacturers have the ability to produce in today's marketplace, just use your imagination. With the Magnetic Building Solutions platform, the possibilities are endless. All right, fantastic. So, you know, I gotta, I've got to say that when I was at uh, Surfaces and came to the, the MBS booth, which was right next to the WFCA booth, I mean, you, you did a little presentation there, Scott, and invited us to come up and uh, try peeling some of these things off the walls. You had one that was a piece of marble, uh, uh, mm -hmm. half-inch marble. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you couldn't you couldn't get it off of there because you had the magnet going all the way to the edge. But once you got it started, you know, it would peel like the wallpaper and yeah. the flexible, the soft materials. Once you got it started, it comes off, but until then it's not going anywhere. No, what you're really concerned about is the slide. And especially on the walls, you've got gravity working against you. And so we've worked to, to dial up the magnetism. Remember only the base is magnetic on the back of the product. That's not magnetic. On the back of the product, what you have is this iron powder injected either into the product itself or a layer that contains iron powder attached to it. And for that reason, you can take any product off and replace it with another product with ease. Once that base is there, it's there forever. It loses about 1% of its magnetism every 100 years. Wow. It is a permanent um, magnet. That, that's incredible. So let's talk about magnetism how how safe is it you know to be around that much magnetism it's a great question it was my first question when i saw it i thought well this is cool but is is this okay uh, i don't know if you can see but on my wrist i wear a magnetic bracelet because they say that that's supposed to make you golf better i want to assure you it does not but but i wear it anyway because you know those for fly fishing <laughs> no but i'm sure somebody would sell you one and tell you it was for fly fishing uh, the reality is this is the good magnet. We, I actually knew about a company from, from my previous life that did indoor air quality testing for the flooring industry. And I contacted them and I said, listen, I know this is not what you normally do. I said, but we've, we've got our hands on this magnetic underlayment. And I said, we just want to make sure it's safe. And they, they're from Ireland. They were coming through the United States, uh, through the Atlanta airport. And we took the product down and showed it to them. And they kind of lit up. And I said, why the reaction? They said, because that's the good magnet. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that's like the magnet you wear on your wrist to make you a better golfer on your knee when you've got an injury or elbow. They said, this is not an electromagnet where a current turns it on and that current actually goes through your body and, and then ignites the magnet. This is not like that at all. This is the good magnet. And so we had them go ahead and we, we paid them to research this a substantial amount of money to prove that it's 100% safe for humans, 100% safe for animals, and 100% safe for anyone wearing a medically implanted device. And so we have all that verified. There are no concerns there whatsoever. That's, that, that's fantastic. And, you know, what, what got me really excited is when you started l listing the benefits 
of using this type of an installation system. So what, spend some time on that because this is, folks, this, uh, as Scott was talking, I was going, oh, yeah, oh, that would make, that, that changes everything. Yeah, I mean, the biggest benefit is time. The fact that you save so much time. If you have the system, and by the way, this is a, a, a patent pending, but a system patent, which basically covers anything in the field of construction where you adhere a product with a receptive layer to a magnetic base, which means it covers uh, floors, walls, ceilings, uh, exteriors of homes, roofs, billboards, swimming pool liners, um, countertops, you, you name it. Any, any way that you are applying the receptive to the magnetic base within the field of construction. And uh, so it, it does, it saves so much time. I, I, an example I think of often here is I, I'm in Dalton, Georgia, where our headquarters is. And we had a restaurant recently that rather than refurbish, they just tore the restaurant down and rebuilt it. But typically about every seven years, a restaurant will refurbish. And when they do, their sales typically go up and then begin to, to come back down again. And so seven years later, they go through that cycle again. The problem is when they do that, they're down for about five to seven days while they're changing the look of the establishment. But if you had our system on the floors and the wall, you would do that overnight. So what's the cost savings to you? So think of any application where time costs you money, assisted living. So if there's a room that has to be redone, then while that room is being redone, it's costing you money. Hospitals, um, casinos, you know, you shut down an area of the casino uh, so that you can change the flooring out and you've got to clear the air after that. It, it can be a few days. All the machines in that area are not able to function during that time. But if you could do that in a number of hours versus a number of days, think about the savings for that. So that's one of the biggest things. Now, it has some obvious cost offsets. As you heard Robert mention in the video, it is a, almost 100% vapor barrier, moisture barrier. And so uh, magnetism by nature doesn't really like moisture, tends to force it away. And so we used CPE in the production of this because that's what the marine world uses for waterproofing. And it is a moisture barrier. So you've got that as a cost offset. It's a crack isolation membrane for stone and ceramic, and it's a sound barrier. It's got positive qualities. And, and Jim, I would love to tell you that we knew all that when we started into this. We hoped it. But quite frankly, every time we'd make a presentation, somebody would say, have you tested it for this? So hey, we, let's, you just gave me an idea. Um, let's have some fun with this. Okay. As Scott's talking, uh, everybody who's listening to this right now, why don't you put in the question box as Scott is telling some of the, the, the applications for this, um, put in the question box your ideas and mm. let's, uh, l let's see what else we come up with. We've got, we've got, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people on the, the webinar today. So put in the question box, not the comment box, use the question box and uh, let's see what we come up with. Yeah, because one of the cool things about this is the multiple applications that you have, Jim. So you've got floors, you've got walls, but think about practical applications, dormitories. So if you had this in your dormitory and the wall was already applied with the two by two magnetic strips and then you had the floor the same way, you could pull a truck up outside that university and sell panels that they could use on the floor and the wall and you could rechange that every six months. Uh, one of the cool things from a ceramic standpoint is if you think about the buying cycle on ceramic, that's a long cycle because people don't want to mess with retroing that. They don't want to mess with having to jackhammer that product up and destroy the product and put something else down. But what if you didn't have to destroy the product? What if, like you said, you could simply break the seal on the corner, pull that up, take the grout around the outside, an acrylic grout, which we recommend, and you could re reuse the tile or you could donate the tile to Habitat for Humanity or some organization that could benefit from that. And so the environmental story in this is great as well, I including the fact that the, the iron powder that we use is, is, is slag. It's recycled content from, from where iron is, is used in building. We take that and we grind that up and pulverize it and we're able to use it in the back of the product. And so there's, there's so many good environmental stories with this as well. Um, so who, who is, so here we've got, why don't we do this? Um, we've got a few questions. Let's go ahead and tackle a few of these now, uh, Scott. Um, somebody said, uh, so here are some of the ideas we're getting. X-ray rooms, um, commercial kitchens. 
Let's see what else. Uh, someone's asked, someone mentioned showers. Has this been tested for showers? Now I can attest to it's been tested on waterfalls because you had one at the show. Yeah. Uh, water continuously running down the front of it. Why don't you talk about that, Scott? It's, it's a unique thing about magnetism that because it doesn't like moisture, it constantly is pushing moisture out. And the only thing that negatively impacts the hold of the magnetic is air pockets. Those air pockets don't allow you to get the grasp you need between the receptive and the magnetic. But as the magnetic is forcing the moisture out, it also forces the air pockets out. You actually get greater adherence if there happen to be some some moisture of some kind. So it doesn't, it doesn't have a negative impact of anything. It might indeed have a positive impact. We've even uh, contemplated spraying an alcohol solution on before you do it so that it has the opportunity to, to push that moisture out and then that would dissipate itself. Uh, and you can actually use it. So yes, uh, moisture is not an issue. It's not one of the things that we have to consider. Uh, can we use it here or use it there? Because moisture doesn't impact. All right. Um, let's take one more question right now. And by the way, at, if I don't get to your questions right now, we're going to leave plenty of time at the end. Uh, so don't, don't get discouraged, but I will take, let's look at this one. Uh, someone's asking, can you grout the tile? You can, we use an acrylic grout, which, uh, has worked very well for us. And then when you pop the tile up, you simply peel the acrylic grout off. It does no damage to the magnetic base. So again, one of the great stories of this is once you do the subfloor right, and by the way, that's a question we get to, the subfloor must be done right. This doesn't allow you to cheapen the process on the subfloor, but once it's done right, you never have to mess with it again because even when you pull the product on the top up, that magnetic base stays down. You just apply a new product on top of it. Terry's asking, do they sell two different components, magnet and powder? Yes, we, we do. Well, actually, maybe three different components. So on the base... We, we sell the magnetic base, which is the role that you saw them roll out in the video. We, MBS, Magnetic Building Solutions, controls that magnetic base because one of the questions you have for me is how do we protect who gets the product? Because we, we, we sell the magnetic base and we do that to quality professional flooring dealers, people that we think will not dumb down the reputation of this. Uh, but you also have the receptive layer you can apply to the back of the product or the ferrite powder, the iron powder that actually goes in. So on quasi soft back products like an LVP or a carpet tile, you can actually inject the iron powder in during the manufacturing process, during the calendaring process. Even though it's a very fine powder, f finer than talcum powder, it's still iron powder, so it's heavy and it naturally migrates down, which gives you the adherence that you need between the receptive layer and the magnetic base. Okay, so who is going to sell, the, sell this product? Well, professional flooring dealers is our intent. The whole reason WFCA got involved is because of our purpose statement. You've heard me say it, but I'll say it again. We exist to ensure the success and profitability of professional flooring dealers and to represent their common interest. And we, we realized, even though I've gotten questions, even from other, other associations that really struggle with the fact that we're involved in this, please understand MBS is a separate entity. It is an LLC, it is a for-profit. But we got involved as a nonprofit because it was gonna be a lot harder to explain why we didn't get involved than it is to explain now why we did. We did it because we see this as something that can greatly benefit the professional flooring dealer and give people a reason to go to that store more often and for something they've not gone for before. Um, so let's talk about how floor dealers are protected. Well, they're protected primarily because of WSA's involvement. Again, we, we're not going to do anything that would negatively impact professional flooring dealers because of our purpose statement. That's our whole reason getting involved. It would be a difficult conversation to explain our involvement otherwise. Remember, because we're a nonprofit, the money we make off of this goes back to our members. We can't keep the money. So we didn't get into this for that. We got into this because... I heard a statement the other day, Jim. It was by a gentleman by the name of Francis Chan. He had written a book, and in the book he says, failure is not what we should fear. What we should fear is succeeding is something that doesn't matter. And I think a lot of times we spend our time solving issues that aren't issues. When we saw this, we realized this is an issue. This is a big deal. And what does an association exist for? We exist to solve problems. So we identify what the problem is in the industry 
and then we put effort behind it. So when we saw installation as a major issue, the first thing we did is we, we bought the assets of CFI uh, to show that we were committed to it. When that alone did not solve the issue, we could have sat back and said, well, hey, we did what we could do. Man, we, we've done our part, the rest of you jump in. But we began to see that there were other solutions. And so we're gonna to continue to focus on this and we will focus our attention toward protecting the professional flooring dealer, again, because we control the base. And that base allows us to control who gets the product, where it's distributed, where it goes. We also help determine which manufacturers will have this platform. And so we will pick manufacturers that we know are, are retailer, professional, foreign dealer friendly, people that have the same heart that we do. Again, that's our involvement. Well, frankly, I, I, I love WFCA's involvement and the way that you guys have gotten involved. And, you know, I, I have in flooring success systems, I coach flooring dealers, we do marketing for them. I have a private mastermind group where we get together in a room and brainstorm, you know, overcoming challenges for, you know, that they're facing in their businesses. I do a ton of webinars and I do live speaking. And, and if I open it up to Q&A, what's your biggest challenge and we'll tackle it, guarantee you one of the things that's going to come up is installation. And it's why you, this is like your third or fourth webinar you've done. Uh, we've had Robert Varden on a couple of times who, who you all just saw in the video. That was, that's Robert. Um, specifically to address the installation issue. And it's been, it's been centered around most of what we've talked about has been centered around, you know, getting people trained quickly, uh, finding them. Um, all kinds of different ways to skin that cat. And Scott, when you, you and I began chatting about this last summer, I went, holy smokes, this is a way to, with one, you know, one, one turn of the crank, make a huge dent, uh, as Steve Jobs would say, make a dent in the universe and, uh, you know, make a dent in the installation universe, uh, certainly. Um, no, no doubt. And Jim, let me just do a little commercial for you and Ken, because what you do here to help the industry is invaluable and you do a phenomenal job at it. And you've not only had me on and Robert, you've had Tom Jennings, I believe you've had Jeff King on. We, we exist as an association to provide resources that benefit everybody. People say, are you a buying group? No, nor, nor do we have any desire to be. We, we bought into this platform because we realized if it got in the wrong hands, it would be very difficult on professional flooring dealers, not only to, to thrive, but, but maybe even to survive. And so we chose to, to get involved because that's what we do. We identify crisis and then we seek to do whatever we can to solve that crisis. Yeah. So the, 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 every, everything you've said, um, I, uh, you know, I began to see it when, when, when I, I first learned about this and I'm, I'm glad for the way that you're involved. Um, let's talk about the applications. Uh, what are what are the different applications with this product? Jim, do you mean from a product standpoint or you mean where can it go? Both. Okay. So as, as I laid out, the cool thing about this patent is it's really anywhere in construction. And so uh, one of the greatest applications where we're getting the most attention right now is the wall. I mean, there's, uh, as you've heard me say, there's more walls being co covered with flooring than since Elvis put shag carpet in Graceland. I mean, it's just, you just don't see this, but we've had such a growth in flooring because you've got LVP, you've got wood, you've got stone, you've got everything going on the walls. This makes that process dramatically simpler. So otherwise, or you're using a double stick tape or you're using an adhesive where once you decide you don't want that, you're gonna do damage to the wall. Once you put our magnetic up, there's no reason to ever take it off because it works with every product. You know, one of the things we were talking about was seasonal, changing the floor. The floors and the walls are so easy to, to switch out. Instead of it taking, you know, half a day, you can change a room out, uh, you know, a 12 by 12 room in an hour. Yeah. If you've, got a, if you've got a restaurant, you know, with the foyer and you want to make it Christmas, well, the walls and the floors, you can, you can have, you know, you can do it in an hour. You know, yeah. yeah. So on the floors, you can do that. Certainly. I mean, take somebody who lives in a cold climate in the winter, if they want carpet down, they can have carpet down. And then in the summer, in an hour, they can change that carpet, pull it up, store it away. You don't have to discard it. There's not a, there's not a waste material here. 
you store it away. Professional installers will come in and install it for you the first time. They'll number those panels on the back so you know how to put them back down. And you can put wood down in the summer if you choose to do that, or stone, or LVP, whatever it may be, simply because you can. And we say, well, will people do that? Well, the reality is we don't know, but before it wasn't an option. I can tell you for sure, wallpaper has gotten so much attention because the reason wallpaper died out was not because of wallpaper, it's the labor component. Well, what if labor wasn't an issue? What if you couldn't mess up with wallpaper? So we now have wallpaper that actually has the iron powder injected into it. It's the same thickness as wallpaper. It's done during the manufacturing process. Once that wall has those magnetic two by twos on it, you roll it down. If you hang it crooked, that's okay. Just roll it back up and roll it down again. You're not bound by your mistake. And so it changes. You could have Christmas, like you said, a, a holiday themed wallpaper or seasonal themed wallpaper for retail. You can change out your environment seasonally as you change out your clothing. I mean, it's, it's amazing what it can do. Exactly. And then, uh, you know, and having spent uh, a few odd jobs as a teenager peeling wallpaper, um, you know, I would have been quite grateful <laughs> um, at the time because you talk about a mind numbing siege to pull down wallpaper. Oh, yes. and now it peels off like, uh, you know, you know, just peel. I mean, it doesn't fall off. It, it you got to get it started. So it's That's not right. going to slip. It doesn't, you know, I, I went and played with all this stuff at, at your at the booth. But once you get it started, it just comes right off like a refrigerator yes. magnet. It does. The hold is the hold is very good, and uh, again, we're we're thankful. Again, that's one of the byproducts of this. We never looked at wallpaper as an option, but as we were looking at everything else, we went, well, "What about wallpaper?" And and certainly, we've gotten a lot of attention for for what we can do there. I'm thinking of so many uh, things I've had to hang up, or you know, even even like a uh, um, I'm, I'm the 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 words escaping me but uh you know if coming in you've got some kind of a decorative feature that yeah. is wall panels or something like that yeah. you know you could have three or four of those and swap them out for each season or, or holiday or or whatever um, you really could here in our here in our dalton offices we've extended our office space for wfca and we have the mbs offices right next to it and in those offices we've done exactly that in, in one room you walk in and we've got We've got wood that's cut, and again, because this is a non-directional magnet, you can put the wood any way that you want to, and you can do intricate inlays, where before that might take days, now you do intricate inlays, including the cuts in hours, uh, with stone, with, uh, with large stone, with, uh, with backsplashes, whatever it may be, it offers you a functionality and flexibility you did not have before. Um, who are you currently working with, uh, with this technology? Manufacturing-wise? Oh, I'm going to do that thing to you that you hope they never do. And I'm going to tell you, we'd really rather them reveal that to you than us. Okay. What we, right. are, what we are is the underlayment aspect of that. But I will tell you that we are in current conversations with some major manufacturers in every product category, Jim. And so, the, again, the cool thing about this is if you walk through a Surfaces or you go through any of the other shows in the industry, in econ or anything else, the reality that every product you see there can work with this platform. Uh, otherwise, in the industry, what we've done, you know, I'm a, I'm a vocal performance major by, by history. That's what I, my degree is in. And I talked about variations on a theme. And so we took nylon and we made it softer and we made it stain proof. And those are variations, but they all affect one product category. We took LVP and through a, a brilliant process made it WPC. But that, again, that's a variation on a theme. This is one introduction from a technology standpoint again for covering news uh, the, the appreciation for them recognizing this because it affects everything everything you do in pulling it literally changes the paradigm well it's the difference between evolution and revolution that's correct that's well put i may use that jim okay i want a quarter each time yeah. you say it well i understand if you say it three times it's your own <laughs> there we go that's what um, i heard. When, and this is coming up on a lot of the questions as I'm watching the stream by, when approximately will retailers have access to this? Our goal has always been in a broad scale to have access to it the, the latter part of the second quarter. Now, we, we have the ability to bring in product now, but it's very isolated. And most of what we're bringing in right now is to, to secure testing. 
mm -hmm. uh, make sure that it does. So if somebody says, have you put it in this, in this type of setting, then we, we bring product in and we put it in that setting. We've tested pretty much every product category you can imagine, wood, ceramic, stone, carpet, carpet tile, carpet broadloom, uh, uh, sheet vinyl, uh, you name it. And uh, we have to make sure that if we're selling this as a universal solution, it has to work with everything and solve the issues that each product category uniquely has. What I liked about your dis your demonstration booth is you had just about everything you could think of hanging on the wall there. Yeah. And if it'll hold it on a wall, it'll sure as heck hold it on a floor. Yeah, and we, we have the ability, we've been working with Shanghai Jiangtao University. We, we gave them a pretty substantial grant and they gave us a group of PhD students. And so they specifically are working with us on this platform, and quite frankly, they've been amazing. They've allowed us, we started with that base layer being 1.5 mil. It is now one mil and is stronger than the 1.5 was. Wow. And that's because we've been able to use their expertise to dial up the magnetism while dialing down the depth of the base. All right. Um, we have got a ton of questions here, so we'll take some time now. Uh, sure. and let's dive into those. Um, what is the largest for, uh, Jay's asking, what is the largest format of tile you can put on the ceiling with this? We haven't experimented a lot with the ceiling yet. In fact, the inventor of this, Shane LeBlanc, has just moved to China and he's focusing on all the other utilizations of this platform. But part of the reason we worked on dialing up the magnetism is obviously if you've got it on the ceiling, that hold matters a lot more. If it falls off the wall, that's, that's bad, but we've made sure that we're strong enough there. Uh, we have not worked with large tiles on the ceiling yet, so I really don't have an answer to that, but it's something we're working with now. Um, how do you accommodate for lippage? This is from Thomas. Uh, that's a great question for one of my technical experts, but I'm probably not the person to answer it. But I, I will tell you this, and Jim's allowing you to ask questions, but if you've got additional questions, please send those to me. Contact me at uh, shumphrey at wfca.org, and I will get those to the right person, and we will get you an answer and a response. We have been blessed enough that we've worked with technical experts from the beginning on this. Robert Gordon, obviously, and CFI, but we've had other experts that are actually part of our team. Again, that's shumphrey, H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y, at wfca.org. Okay, I've got S. Humphrey at WFCA.org. That's it. Okay, I just put that in the chat box for everybody. Uh, Scott, I don't know what you've just unleashed on yourself, but it's out there. <laughs> I'm used to it, man. I'm getting so many messages, but it's exciting because it means people are seeing the same capabilities and possibilities with this platform that we've been seeing for the last year. Sure. We'll get, we've, we've got another 15 or 20 minutes here, so we'll get to a lot of these, but yeah, it, it, if you have more questions, I don't, we're not going to get to all of them, but um, let's keep moving through here. I'll try and sort through them and, and pick ones you haven't answered. Uh, how, does, how does it handle the weight of the grout after the install? I'm assuming they're talking about the walls. Uh, well, we've used it both ways. We've used it groutless and we've used it with grout and we've had no issues whatsoever. In fact, one of the things we've actually experiment a little bit with is actually using ferrite powder, the iron powder, in place of sand so that the grout actually has a magnetic attraction as well. And that way oh, wow. you can simply peel it up. But we haven't finalized that process yet. Right now with the acrylic grout, we've had no issues whatsoever. John is asking, does it act as a hardy board for tile on wood floors? Well, it, it, the best answer I can give is it is indeed a crack isolation membrane. I don't know that it would act as a hardy board, but again, that's a great question for me to pass along to the technical experts on that. Okay. Um, Blake is asking, how does this product work with expansion and contraction in hardwood during seasonal changes, and does this require a controlled climate? Yeah, it's a, it does not require a controlled climate. That's a great question. It works well, but remember, if a product naturally has a tendency like wood to bow or, or to curl, um, you're gonna, what you basically have is you have a force pulling against that natural tendency. So it won't totally keep that from happening, but it will perform better with this system than it would otherwise. So you're gonna get expansion and contraction of wood, that's natural, as moisture change, variation of moisture, 
in the room, it will expand and contract. What this allows it to do is it can still expand and contract, but it does it just a little less than it would otherwise. Okay. Now you, you answered this, I think in part, but let's, let's hit it one more time. Ron is asking, how do you get the iron powder on the back of the flooring? And that's part of the manufacturing process. Well, it's, it's, it's really three ways. And I told you two, Jim, one of them is you inject the, the iron powder in during the manufacturing process on products like LVP and carpet tile. Another is on wood and ceramic, you actually adhere it at the end of the manufacturing process through a cold press. And the third is we have developed a two by two peel and stick receptive. So I mentioned to you the peel and stick magnetic, mm -hmm. but you can actually retrofit any existing product with the receptive layer and it will work with the system as well. Okay. Um, okay, you answered that one. Can this be used on like an, an exterior wood deck or an AZ room? Yeah, we have, uh, the testing we've done so far, we see no, no concerns about it being used outside or inside. Again, moisture does not impact it. Now, again, if moisture impacts the product that goes on top, then you have that concern. It doesn't change the natural tendency of the product, but it does not impact the platform. And again, we are the platform. We're not producing the product that goes on top. We're working with manufacturers that do that. But the platform itself is, is not impacted by moisture whatsoever. Uh, will rolled goods be, uh, will you be able to use this with rolled goods at some point? You can, you can. The, the, the challenge with that, Jim, is it's a heavy product. I mean, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but with, with LVP and carpet tile, we loose lay. We don't use any adhesive whatsoever. And okay. we're able to do that because it weighs about 0.6 pounds per square foot, and it comes in 100 square feet per roll box. And so that box weighs uh, 65, 70 pounds. And so when it comes out, it's ready to lay, and it loose lays. Now, if you were installing a product like a ceramic, a stone, or a wood, you would probably want to adhere it with an adhesive because when you pull that product up, the natural tendency is because of the bond, you would pull the base up too. And so we... That, that is an option that's up to the consumer or to the, to the person installing. But, but with LVP and carpet cloud, I can tell you we've had no issues with loose lay installation whatsoever. Uh, is rust a concern considering that iron is used with respect to wet applications such as showers? It's a great question. I'm, I'm glad whoever asked that. Thank you because it was a concern. It's one of the first things we tested this for. We did the salt spray test that some of you may be familiar with. And depending on the ferrite powder that we used, we had some issues early on. So again, in working with the university, we have been able to develop a pre-oxidized iron powder so that it cannot rust. Uh, it is, it's already been oxidized. It does not have the ability to rust. So no, with this product now, what, in no way whatsoever, would you have any concerns with rust now? If somebody were to come out with a knockoff of this illegally, but used a cheap ferrite, then we couldn't promise you that. But I can tell you with the MagnaBuild system, that will never be an issue. How about, uh, Ernie's asking, interior carpet over padding, is that achievable? It's achievable in a couple of ways, Jim. If the, if the padding is attached to the carpet, it's probably the best, because at, if you had a backing onto the carpet and there was the pad, and then you put the receptive on the back of that, Mm -hmm. What you can't have is anything that separates the bond between the magnetic and the receptive. So you can't put a pad in between. The other thing you could do is put a pad potentially underneath the magnetic, ah. the magnetic on top of it. So you've got a couple of options, but some of those we have not done any in-depth testing on uh, as of yet because the, the most practical applications at this point are carpet tile and, and LVP, WPC, SPC. Okay. Uh, is this, uh, D Denise is asking, is this TCA approved? I would love to tell you I even knew what that meant, Jim, but I would have to, so I'm not going to do well, that. Denise, uh, spell it out. <laughs> but I will say that there are, we, we, we don't have some of the certifications we're looking for. We're early enough into this. We don't have them yet. What I can tell you is that we passed every type of standard test in the industry at this point. Uh, lead certification and things like that we're still working on. Uh, we, we do not yet have those. Okay.
Here's a good one. Uh, Nay is asking, the installation crisis is caused by money, installers leaving the trade and are not entering because of low wages. How is this system going to impact the bottom line for installation professionals? Uh, that's a great question. So obviously, because we own CFI as part of the WSCA, we want to obviously help the professional flooring dealer. We certainly want to help the professional installer, too. And you're right. Part of the reason people are not getting into, into installation is we deglamorize that occupation so much by trying to pay as little as possible for installation and by basically dumbing it down. We tell everybody, if you don't go to college, you, you don't have a lot of value. And the reality is we all have people that we rely on that are super good in their trade. So I have a mechanic that I use who's not part of a dealership. I use him because I trust him and he's amazingly good at what he does. I've never asked him what his degree is in. I don't care if he has one. I care if he's good at it. What this allows an installer to do is to, is to typically, depending on the product you're installing, you can install two to four times more in a day with no wear and tear on your body, which allows the installer to make more money. Therefore, promoting the occupation is a viable occupation that you can not only make a good, a good living in, you can make a great living in it. And now, what's really cool is people that did floors can also do walls. And we have the ability to bring the construction trade together because people who did walls can now do floors because the training on this is, is not a face. You don't have to do a face-to-face -face training. A lot of this training can be done just like the video you saw from Robert. We'll create a certification. That most likely will be an online certification that allows people to be certified in installation of this platform. And then we'll tie our warranty of the base to that certification itself. You know, I got to tell you, just in going through all these questions and all the things that uh, uh, we've discussed, the the work that the, you and the WFCA and the, and the partners you've had in this of uh, thinking of everything ahead of time. Um, you know, I'm sure there's more. Uh, you know, things will come up. Uh, any new technology, the there the will be uh, things you need to look at and test and so forth. But you guys have just done a great job in covering so much of this already. Uh, and you, one of the things I'll tell you, uh, so I told you Shane LeBlanc is the inventor of this product, but his partner is a gentleman by the name of Lloyd Lausenizer. Uh, I'd love to spell that for you, but I'm sure that my spelling teachers from the fifth grade would fail me immediately if I tried. I think it's L-A-U-Z-E-N-H-O-U-S-E-R, but if you put something like that in Google, what you'll see is about 150 patents show up because Lloyd is a professional inventor. He he writes a lot of the missile trajectory code for the U.S. Missile Defense System. He's a mathematical genius, but he invests in, in products. He surrounds himself with inventors, and when he sees an invention that he thinks will change an industry, he invests in it. And he believes so much in this that even though he's going through a little bit of a health challenge recently, I talk to him almost daily about our progress with this because he believes our industry uh, – the writing on the wall is not real good if we continue to lose retailers like we've lost them over the last 10 years. He sees this as something that can revitalize the reason people go into a professional flooring dealer commercially and residentially and seek solutions. What is the, Justin is asking, do we have any kind of a cost factor of the base? And I'll expand that a little bit. You know, if you've got a traditionally installed floor and a magnetic, a magna build installed floor, it, it, apples to apples, is there much of a, is there much of a cost difference? So let me, let me answer first on the product standpoint. So we've worked very diligently to cut price down. In fact, there were other magnetic flooring products out there before ours. They typically were reversed where they had the receptive down and the magnetic on the back of the product. The problem with that is every time you replace the product, you're replacing the most expensive component. There was another system that was directional where you had to lay it based on the poles of the magnets so it didn't have the non-directional ability. Uh, this product is less expensive than either of those solutions. But typically, as with any new technology, it is slightly more expensive than standard product that's out there today. When I went and got my new iPhone, they didn't say, hey, what did you pay for the last one? Because we, we want to make sure it's not any more expensive than that. They understood that with technology, I would pay a little bit more for that. And we don't want to dumb this product down. This has the potential to elevate the reason people go into the professional flooring dealer. And so is it a little more expensive? Yes, it is. But remember, with the cost offsets of a, of a vapor barrier, a crack isolation membrane, a sound barrier, in many cases, it's less expensive the first install. I can tell you, with ceramic, it is dramatically less expensive the first install. 
And then every install after that, it's basically half the cost because the base doesn't have to be removed from the previous install. You're probably looking at an upcharge of uh, at least a dollar to a dollar fifty from standard product. That includes both the, re the magnetic base and the receptive layer on the back of the product from standard product as it is today. So for residential carpet, this is from Allison. For residential carpet applications that you're, you know, talking about the easy switch out. Um, She's asking, do you not have to install smooth edge or power stretch it? No. You don't. In fact, we have a room over here, and I almost wish I'd moved over there, Jim, to show it to you. But the reality is, in that room, the baseboard, the clear rail, and all the trim is also utilized as a system. Because remember, the patent's not just on flooring products. So all of them are held on by a receptive layer put on the back of them and applied to a magnetic base. And so we do have a Broadland product. We have, actually have a time-lapse video. So if you go to our YouTube channel, and I'll try to get that information to you, Jim, so you can post it for everybody. Right. We have a YouTube channel that has all these videos. We did a time-lapse. And in that room, we pulled all the product out of it in 46 minutes using the system and installed all new product back in. And that's walls and floor, trim, chair rail, and baseboard in about 48 minutes. So the whole thing took an hour and a half? About an hour and a half. Now on the, and, we, and part of that video shows us doing that with Broadloom. Wow. You can do it with Broadloom, but again, uh, it's going to be a heavy product to install. We did it with a woven Stanton product. And what was amazing is, first of all, it does a phenomenal job at hiding the seams. We've been working with a manufacturer who does a lot of Axminster. And when we were at Domatech show in, uh, in Han Hanover, they had a beautiful painting that they had done, a, a custom print on Axminster, and uh, we were able to put that on the wall. People kept walking by it until we pulled a piece off and showed how it was adhered. Nobody realized that that was the system holding it on. They just thought it was a cool rug that was up there. But it allows you to do patterns and things you couldn't do before. As far as power stretching, it's not necessary because you've got a force constantly holding it in place. You simply tuck it under the baseboard. That's all there is to it. The, the, um, and on the baseboards too, I'm thinking wings coating, um, crown molding. Mm -hmm. uh, when you try and take that off, you wind up scratching it and breaking it a lot of times. Uh, yes. so this will just pop right off and then you put it back on or exchange it for something else. Uh, yeah. And w which makes me think of something else, Jim. If you did have a problem, let's say with, the, with some flooring, let's say you had a, a wood plank that, somebody dropped something on and it damaged that wood plank. If you have a, if you have a locking system, that can be a booger to, to, to replace. But with this, you don't need the locking system because the magnetic holds it in place. So you just simply put a suction cup on it, pull that board up, and take another board and put it in its place. Um, Jeremiah is asking, will this have any effect on sensitive electronics? Not at all. It's a great question, though. So the same company we had checked for health issues also checked for electronics. In fact, we, we took somebody over and showed them a presentation today. If you take your phone, you can get a Gauss meter. It's an app that's free, and it will measure the magnetism of any product. Uh, the Earth is a magnet, obviously, because we have a north and a south pole, and so there's a natural uh, fluctuation of magnetism in that. If you put this product directly on top of a product that has the magnetic base, you'll get maybe a slight variation above what the natural magnetism is on the earth. If you put that same Gauss meter on somebody else's phone, it'll peak out. Because mm. your phone has much more magnetism permeating from it than the system allows. Wow. If, if we took two products, both of them, let's say a two mil LVP, and we put both of them on the magnetic, they would both adhere, so you would not be able to slide them. But if you took one of them and picked it up and put it on top of the other one, it would not adhere at all because no magnetism is permeating through the first one. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, Charles and John are both asking about installations over floor heat or radiant heated floors. We've done some testing on that. We actually work with the company. We've had no issues whatsoever. It does not affect it negatively, uh, nor does the heat negatively impact the magnetism. There are two things, Jim, that you should note that will impact the magnetic. One is, extreme heat, but that's like over 400 and something degrees Fahrenheit because it actually melts the CPE that's holding the ferrite in place. 
Uh, so that's that's damage that can't be undone. But well, then I can't use it on my bathroom floors then. You, you like it hot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the other is it's too cold. My 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 uh, my oven tiles. Um, <laughs> you gotta have some thick okay. feet. Okay. Um, hey Jim, let me finish that thought. On extreme cold, extreme cold stuns it. But as soon as it gets back to a normal temperature, and when I say extreme cold, we're talking like 40 degrees below zero, that will stun the magnetism. But as soon as it thaws back, then the magnetism comes right back. No negative long-term impact. Okay, for our, for our Antarctic dealers. Exactly. Make sure that you season it inside the home for an hour <laughs> first. Or it won't work. And you won't work either, by the way. You're 40 below zero. You got a lot of dealers down in the Antarctic. Oh, yeah. It's a growing territory. It is. It is. Um, is there a maximum size tile you can put on the wall? This is from Jocelyn. No, Jocelyn, that, that's a good question as well. In fact, uh, next door we have some two by three tiles of actual full stone. Uh, the heavier and the more mass that you cover, the stronger the hold. The heavier, I believe, not scientifically, but as a music guy telling you, I believe it's because the heavier, the more it pushes the air pockets out so you get better adherence. But the more mass, no matter what product you put on it, the greater the hold. The more space it covers, the greater the hold. Okay. Let's see here. A lot of really good questions. Yeah, this is wonderful. A lot of the same. A lot of people asking the time frame. You already answered that. Gold, middle of second quarter, somewhere around yeah. there. Yeah. Um, Justin asks, will this compromise the floating ability of products like laminate, LVT, WPC, and SPC? No. No, it will not. And we have tested for that. No, not whatsoever. Uh, what about allergies and or odor? No odor to it whatsoever. And, and it is uh, inorganic. So mold cannot grow on the product itself. You could have dust or something get on top of it and mold could grow on that but there's nothing that mold can feed off of in this so ideally let's imagine that you have this on your walls and and by the way Jim, one of the things we're, we're working and developing right now is a wall board that is made in the factory that would replace drywall that actually has the magnetic applied in the factory so on new construction you would have that there if you had that on the wall and you had it on the floor then there's nowhere for mold to grow let's say that you were in a flood you simply take the product outside, dry it off, and you're able to go back and reapply it. Okay. So uh, we got the answer. TCA is the Tile Council of America. So is it certified with them yet? It is not, although they did come by and see it at the show. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I apologize. I thought she was talking about a specific test. I'm very familiar with the Tile Council and BART, and, uh, but no. And uh, we're happy to work with any of the associations on any testing or certifications that they want with the product. We think this will help them with their installation issues as much as it helps us. Okay, fantastic. We've got a, a handful more questions. We might actually get through these. We're a little past the top of the hour. Do you have a few more minutes, uh, Scott? I'm, I'm yours. As long as we got questions, I'm willing to sit here. You got it. Um, Kevin is at – oh, uh, a number of people have asked us before the webinar, will the, will the replay be available? And, yes, uh, mid – Early to mid next week, our video editor is going to clean it up and make us all look good, Scott and uh, Ken. So, uh, <laughs> the layer brushing, Ken. <laughs> we'll, we will. Uh, we'll have that available to for, within a week or so of the, the live broadcast. Uh, flammability. Um, Passed all flammability tests, all smoke tests, any basic test you can imagine. German roll chair, rolling load. Uh, We've tested for everything that is standard. Remember, we, we've been through this process with multiple manufacturers, and they knew the first things they had to verify is that we got through that basic testing. All of that's been done. Okay. Uh, what's the life expectancy on the base? Now, Scott, let me see if I've got this part, if I've been a good student. It, the magnetism loses 1% per 100 years. That is correct. As a max, Jim. So every country has a standard for what makes something a permanent magnet. The strictest standard by country is the United States, and we blow their standard away. 
at the max, ours will lose 1% of magnetism per 100 years. Okay. Uh, so we're thinking about putting like a 10,000 year warranty on it. I, I buy that. <laughs> if That's we did, Jim, somebody point. would come out with an 11,000 year warranty the next day. Maybe, uh, maybe it can be a continental, a continental drift isolation membrane. <laughs> For the next round of dinosaurs that come through, you know, we got we got members who live, you know, in the Bay Area and in California. There's a fault line there. How is this for oh. earthquake protection? You God. know, what? that's a great. We had this question not just for earthquakes, but also for RVs. You know, and so anywhere where you have vibration, we know that it adheres very well to the wall. But we honestly are doing that testing now because we had never thought about it. But that question came up at surfaces. How does it do with vibration? So we are testing for that now. Okay. Um, but, uh, someone's asking for the YouTube link to see those other videos. I'll tell you what we'll do. Scott, you get us the link. I'll send it to you and you post it if you don't mind. That would be Yeah, when we do the replay, we'll have it underneath the video so you can go look at those other, right. other things. Okay. Um, but Jim, I, I would tell you, I think if you simply go on YouTube and put magnetic building solutions, it will probably pull up those videos for you. That's probably okay. the way to find it. Um, this is a longer question. Let me see if I can get through it here. Um, it would be time consuming to apply the iron film to the existing products. I'm, I'm assuming they're ta talking about peel and stick. Yes. Uh, how, okay. So how many products will this launch or mid, you know, what we're talking the initial product availability approximately mid second quarter, they're asking how many products will be available at that point. And we may not have an answer to that yet. No, we'll focus initially. What we do know we'll have is carpet tile and we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, LVP, WPC, SPC. Uh, it's likely that we would have backsplashes and, uh, and tile and stone too, but we're, we're not certain on that yet. We're talking to some manufacturers, but we don't have agreements there yet. I think it's important to realize this is very, this is cutting edge. This is right on the bleeding edge. It was just announced a couple of weeks ago, really in, the, in public uh, at Surfaces and in, in FC News back in December. So um, th this is really new and things are, are in flux right now. Mm -hmm. One last question, it's a long one, let me see. Where does the increased cost of installation material benefit the consumer? In other words, how would a dealer convince a customer to pay more for the setting material instead of using the increase in cost to purchase a better flooring product? Uh, cost and speed. Uh, the iPhone analogy doesn't work well considering a new product brings tangible benefits in processing speed and such. I doubt multiple options for different season supplies to your average consumer. Um, I'm gonna chime in on that one just for a minute. And that is, um, you know, it, it's going to come down to you, your selling ability, being able to you train your salespeople to uh, demonstrate the benefits that Scott has covered to the consumer. And, uh, you know, it's not about cheap price. That is a huge, that's, that's something that, it, you know, Oh, everybody just wants the cheapest price, and it's just simply not true. Um, people want value, and if your salespeople know how to sell on value, and you train them on how to sell on value and sell on benefits. You know, everybody's favorite radio station is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Right. People, well, benefits, benefits, benefits. Um, you know, if, if people, all people cared about was low price, everyone would be driving a little compact car, but that's not the case. So that's my two cents on that, uh, Scott. Yeah, we, we, the answer is we don't know. And I would agree with the statement that probably most people aren't going to buy multiple floors for the same setting. I'm, I'm not saying it for that reason. I'm saying it to tell you what's possible. Because the reality is we don't know what they'll do because it's not been possible before. What we do know is it makes the change of product so much easier that it allows that option where that option wasn't available before. I mean, again, take wallpaper. People did not, people quit using wallpaper because of the labor component and how difficult it was. 
Sure. Yeah, well, it's not difficult. You might change wallpaper seasonally, uh, uh, different settings. You could have uh, the football team for your kid come over, and you might want to do something unique. I mean, you you've got abilities you didn't have before. Uh, the savings from a installation standpoint are based on ease, not simply based on cost. We always look in this industry at how do we cut more money out. I think that's the wrong solution. The industries that survive and thrive aren't looking solely at money. They're looking at practicality. Does this make life simpler? Does it make it easier? Does it make it more convenient? Does it give me more flexibility? And the answer to all those questions is yes, it does. And by the way, if you can sell the life cycle, then this is a no brainer because maybe they don't get it the first time, but what you have to think of as a professional flooring dealer is once they have that magnetic base down, you own that consumer because they need to go back to somebody that has a product with a receptive on it to put on it the next time. They're going to go back to the one who sold them the bulk. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that's all we've got time for question wise i put in the um and we got pretty much got through all of them scott yeah. uh, some of them were were people were asking questions you already covered um if they want if if anybody wants to send in further questions they didn't get their question answered or want more clarification why don't you give out your email address one more time yes it's s humphrey as in Scott, and then H-U-M-P-H-R-U-Y, at WFCA.org. And when, how can uh, our listeners get more information at this point? The best thing is to send it to me. I'll distribute the emails to the right party to get them information, but they can certainly go to the MBS website, Magnetic Building Solutions uh, has a website, and uh, I'll give that address to you as well when we do the YouTube. We'll make all that available to them. A lot of the test information and practical knowledge is on that website to answer the questions. We've got brochures we can send out to them as well. Fantastic. All right. Well, Scott, uh, I'm amazed. We had uh, a, a, an entire, you know, legion of questions standing up. And you knocked them down. You're like a, you're like one of those uh, target range, tar those BB gun target things at the carnival, just knocking those ducks down. It's hard uh, to find a question I haven't had to answer already on this. I one. can imagine. I can imagine. So thank you for coming on and sharing and, uh, you know, taking the time to, to educate us all. Up. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Ken, so what do we got coming up for our next webinar? Well, uh, <clears throat> Jim and Scott, thanks again so much. It was a terrific, terrific webinar. And I think 62 questions, that might be a record. I'm not sure. But, uh, I think that, I think that's the, just the tip of the iceberg. And I was uh, sitting here just having, uh, sir, going through the questions and letting Scott handle. I'm shoving them at him. We're like, <laughs> it, is, there, it is certainly Ooh. striking nerve in the industry. And I do think this is going to be a, a game changer myself. And I think a lot of other folks do too. Thank you. Uh, but Jim, uh, as far as next month, March 15th is our next webinar. Uh, the great folks from Benchmark will be involved. How to quickly find and recruit great salespeople will be the, the, the uh, subject matter. And in a, in a day when uh, the with a tight labor pool, I think it's going to be a great webinar. Yeah, I agree. You know, if, if there's a question that I get asked most often, it's about the installation cri crisis, but a very close second is finding quality salespeople, which is why I wanted to bring Benchmark on. We talked at length at Surfaces, and they've got a great, great program lined up for us. So be sure and, and, and mark your calendar on that March 15th. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day, guys. Bye.